my first question for you is how do you make sure to inculcate values while enhancing the habit of reading in today's youth wow that's a very very intelligent and important question see <clears throat> i think the most underrated thing in in our culture is about role models we don't talk much about role models right i think role models play a very important role to to you know shape our character more than personality i think what is more important is character is character is what you do when nobody is watching you yeah and personality is how you behave when the world is watching you right now we are just looking at each other's personality but once i am done with this session and i am all alone in the bedroom you are not going to watch me then the choice that i take when i am all alone nobody is watching me whether to flirt with the girl on whatsapp or read couple of pages from robin sharma that choice defines my character absolutely right? and i think character is taught by such great role model so when i was in stock market i was completely money minded you no know? profits money my bank balance was the only thing that was important to me not about relationships and people and so my role models were harshad mehta ketan parekh vijay malya <laughs> nirav modi they're all my friends and clients yeah wow. i was living a very lavish life but then you uh, know it was uh, i was depressed i was under chronic depression and gradually when i started reading biographies and autobiographies of great world leaders like mahatma gandhi swami vivekananda martin luther king junior nelson mandela mother teresa dr kalam gradually my my role model started changing and there was a paradigm shift in my mindset from what's in it for me to what can i give absolutely that's where your my value system changed see values i don't talk about values taught to us in those bal bharati text integrity honesty yeah fine of course they are important i'm talking about your personal set of value you can create your own personal set of value like reading habit has now become my value it's not a marketing strategy it's a value when people ask me why don't you charge 10 rupees at least for your mission make india read i said it is as good as asking mahatma gandhi why don't you charge 10 rupees for practicing truth and why non violence <laughs> it's an ideology it's a value it's not strategy it's a value no doubt but nowadays i personally feel as a soft skills trainer that even youth have stopped greeting their teachers youth have stopped spending quality time with the elders at home but at the same time if given a chance to be a part of some wonderful grand big event they are ready to stand and click a picture with somebody who is at a senior citizen home so why is that happening wow that's a very good observation see i am nobody to to blame the the generation okay i believe be the change you wish to see in others there is no point in saying aajkal ke bacche you know this generation not respecting the elderly people completely engrossed into the mobile phone and watching video games and pornography no there is no what are we going to achieve by doing this right see kids do what we do not what we say yes if we are watching tv the whole day they are going to watch tv if we are going to be on the mobile they are going to be on the mobile only the apps will be different if we read books they'll be reading books So i should not preach but practice because children have a keen observation and they always yeah. look at their own parents they always copy the things from their closed ones so it's high time my dear friends let's just stop blaming our kids our youth at the same time if you look at the brighter side nowadays youth have become very strong and very clear with their observation and also have got a very clear goal in front of them so i believe they are more focused than us what we were they have become better decision makers we we were supposed to like at our age i remember we used to be dependent on somebody else to take decision on our behalf but if you look at today's generation they are stronger they are bolder isn't it amrut yes 100% as you rightly said you know preaching doesn't work practicing works practicing works okay? so so we have to you know bring changes in ourselves if we have a mobile phone on the dining table while having dinner we have no right to scold them 
कि तुम yes. पूरा दिन मोबाइल पे रहते हो एब्सोल्युटली इफ पेरेंट्स आर ऑलवेज स्पेंडिंग मैक्सिमम टाइम लाइक 22 आवर्स आउट ऑफ 24 ऑन देयर मोबाइल फोन्स विद देयर गैजेट्स देन व्हाई डू यू शाउट एट योर किड्स दे हैव आल्सो have it like it's in them now it's a part of their regular regime well my next question for you because you have been a youth icon so you are a mentor for so many people so who is your mentor who is your uh-huh. inspiration <laughs> well as i said i mean all the th- 2000 books that i have read till now especially all those great world leaders especially uh, i i literally imitate dr kalam i imitate uh, his lifestyle his routine so i think dr ap j abdul kalam is my major source of inspiration i wish he was alive he would have been the biggest evangelist of my mission make india read and possibly i could not meet him he is no more so when it was i think the first book that i did as part of summary of booklet mission make india read was his autobiography wings of fire agni pank so i started the mission by paying tribute to him and he had just died when i started in the month, in, in the year 2015 he just passed away one month ago when i started so yeah he is he is my mentor among living beings i think the uh, i i i think i think bill gates is one of those rare entrepreneurs who is now on his second mountain so there is a book called the second mountain where it's a metaphor uh, used where the first mountain is where we chase money you know we try to impress the world we should look good yeah and then there is a value of suffering <laughs> we realize that okay what i was doing for lost all these years i was just mm-hmm. half the life is spent in impressing other people what about me what about my inner peace yeah and the journey starts inward and through that value of suffering there are very few people who climb the second mountain which is about making a meaningful contribution to your motherland is about Absolutely. you know working on your purpose and passion then then you don't have to wait for a weekend to enjoy you don't have to wait for a monday to work they all start looking same yes. so i believe i'm lucky that i'm i'm on a second mountain at a very young age <laughs> and so does uh, uh, bill gates no yes. he got he, he learned from steve jobs the mistake that steve jobs committed and then now he, he stepped down from the as a ceo of microsoft and and lying somewhere in south africa helping the poor building toilets fighting malaria so there is so much in uh, what you shared right now one thing what i learned is we must try our level best to follow our passion the second thing is let's learn from our mistakes or rather mistakes of each other also instead of having an eye for detail as far as only the bad elements are concerned we should also look at the positive side of a person no matter whether a human being for you is very irritated or an ugly guy but at the same time if you will have a i mean a good heart and you will get to know what are the things that even you would like to inculcate in your personality from each other so let's learn from each other isn't it amrut yeah yeah i think you sounded like you are summarizing that book itself written by <laughs> david brooks the second mountain i highly recommend all our viewers to read this book the second mountain written by david brooks okay so we will definitely mention the same in the comments so my dear friends you can just pause the video and write in the comment section if you want amrut to be a part of your contacts if you want to invite amrit as a speaker in your organization if you want to have reading as one of the habit in your regime amrit would be one person who can help you not only in enhancing your communication skills but also in becoming a better human being well my next question for you is while following a very good mission of make india read what has been the biggest challenge for you till date see well uh, i think my biggest competitor is the the biggest concern that i have amongst most of us be it young old or adult young adults the amount of unproductive time during the day has increased by many folds and we know where we are spending that unproductive time most of the time uh, in this digital world so i think that is my biggest enemy for the mission 
by any might be of competition not with books or other reading apps no they are in fact helping me in my mission right if you if if richa is already a voracious reader for example then then you don't need booklet guy you have already helped me to accomplish mission make in india read so by competition not with books or other reading apps but with for with against those unproductive apps yeah and those dance videos and nura fate and kapil sharma stand up comedy and pornography and those infinite aimless scrolling on on instagram and youtube i'm not saying these are bad things okay i am a great fan of kapil sharma but the the way they are manipulating our psyche they are paid crores and crores of rupees in the silicon valley to find out that hack to to manipulate the human behavior okay and take control of our behavior and we think that it's a stupid instrument what is what is it going to do because you know substance abuse or substance addiction can be seen it is visible right a drug addict can be is visible on his face but this is called as behavioral addiction which is invisible it can be hidden easily through those filters on instagram yes so i think we should take it very seriously and i think books or reading habit is my tool the way gandhi ji had his tools satya and ahinsa my tool is books to fight this uh, for him it was britishers for me it's unproductive time so that well, is the biggest if- challenge if you are not allowed to use the word fight what other word would you like to have uh i think uh, dealing dealing with the unproductive time i'm not saying that every minute of the day has to be productive okay yes. unproductive time is also welcome but as i said my concern is the amount of unproductive time has disproportionately increased during the day and Absolutely. the the worst part is we don't realize it we yes. think chalo ek minute check karta hu whatsapp और उस चक्कर में पंद्रह मिनट कैसे जाते पता नहीं चलता एक मोबाइल पे ऑप्शन होता है वी गेट दैट डेटा यू सच टाइम हाउ मेनी आर्स यू आर स्पेंडिंग ऑन योर मोबाइल सो हैव अ लुक एट दैट ऑल्सो वेल इवन एज अ सॉफ्ट स्किल्स ट्रेनर आई ऑल्सो फेल दैट we need to value time we need to understand that the most important and the most expensive thing that we have in today's world is time so please spend your time on the things which you feel are going to help you in your life or it is going to be productive and when i say productive i am not talking about the big zeros i'm talking about kuch value addition aapki life mein bhi hona bahut zaruri hai now my next question for you is you look like a very cool and calm guy so what is the biggest stress for you kabhi aapko stress hua hai aur agar hua hai to sabse bada stress aapke liye kya raha hai <laughs> well i would be a big liar if i say i'm always stressful yeah but fortunately i have read a book which helped me to understand stress in a better way stress is not bad always uh there is a book uh, called the spirit of kaizen kaizen is a japanese yes. word spirit of kaizen and that just blew my mind and opened my eye towards the concept called stress so the stress concept is a recent development in psychotherapy okay originally stress is nothing but fear yes see you don't see stress in other animals and birds but there are fear animals get fear fearful birds get fear so what happens is when when a bird gets fearful what it does it it just flies away right when a monkey baby monkey gets fear it just goes and you know hug his mother clench his mother okay uh, a, a deer when it's fearful it just jumps and runs away but a human being when he is uh, in a uh, fearful or we say so called stress we go in isolation we lock ourselves we are stay away from people and that is dangerous don't be alone when you are under stress go and share your vulnerability yeah share your pain with your mother with your parents with your with your siblings with your friends whoever but don't go in isolation because that is unnatural but the problem is yeah. it is easy to preach it is difficult to follow what you said because when somebody is disturbed or broken or totally shattered yes isolation is one thing what we all look for maybe just to relieve ourselves or to spend some time with one own self or to figure out the ways how to cope up with the stress isn't it amrut 
yeah agreed i would i can't resist sharing my experience so uh, let me share what happened uh, when i left my uh, stock market job i had a lot of savings so i started a new startup it did not work well i tried a second startup that too failed i tried a third startup that also failed so three failed startups on my linkedin profile and one failed relationship on my facebook profile i went into chronic depression and things became so bad i was depression for almost one and a half months i was i was just living on one cup of tea and two biscuits no lunch no dinners because oh depression has a direct attack on your appetite i was yes. reduced to skeleton i was i was not looking myself into the mirror for weeks and months and things became so bad one day richa that i decided i'll not see the next day's rising sun it was 8 o'clock in the evening i was all alone at home sitting in the living room on the sofa and i got up to get the things which are required to hang myself and i walked three steps one two three aur ghar ke light chale gaye so it was difficult to find out things because you're not used to do it on every day every day basis so i walked back three steps again and sat on the same sofa and i remembered the words of my elder brother he always used to say that amrut whenever you are stuck up with a question what next read random either meet somebody meet some uh, friends or read read random right i said okay i am all alone at home i don't, don't don't feel like talking to anybody let me read the last book of my life so i oh picked God. up uh, a book which was lying on the right side of the sofa and started reading it was krishna and balram going through a forest and krishna says that look it's getting dark so i'll go to sleep but you keep a check on us you keep a guard on us because it's a risky area once you get tired we will switch the roles so balram says okay krishna goes to sleep balram is walking and a monster comes and yells at balram balram gets scared and that gives confidence to the monster and monster grows bigger in size and balram shrinks in size aisa karte karte wo aur chillata hai bahut dar jata hai balram he shrinks 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 the giant the monster gets bigger and bigger to such an extent balram is so scared he screams krishna and fades down on the ground krishna mistook that my elder brother has called my name that it is your turn and i am now resting my job my my duty is done so krishna starts walking the same monster looks at a new face and yells but this time krishna calmly says what do you want fearlessly and something different happens this time krishna grows bigger and a monster shrinks in size he again gives futile attempt krishna bolte hai kya chahiye bhook lagi kya bolo na kya chahiye chilla kyu raha hai aur aisa karte karte he shrinks to a tiny nut size krishna aaram se takes him up and ties a knot to his dhoti and goes to sleep the next morning both the brothers resume the journey and uh, balram shares his nightmare and a huge giant had almost killed me and krishna says wait 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 are you talking about him he was going to kill you and balram says yes but how come he is so small he was huge last night and the epic message goes you know well ved vyas the writer of the stories from gita mahabharat he wanted to say face what you must face the monster was just a metaphor of the problems and challenges of our life if we don't try to face them try to avoid escape that problem will become bigger than you and that problem will gain control over you like that giant monster gain control over balram but if you face what you must face you become bigger than the problem and you gain control over it exactly the way krishna did wow and that bad ugly thought of self sabotage never came back in my mind wow it, it was there for one full minute thanks to a book that saved my life I understand. And also thanks to Maharashtra. Also thanks to Maharashtra Electricity Board. If the negative light didn't come, then you would have invited some other guest today. <laughs> and thanks to you for sharing this wonderful experience, a uh, story. Wonderful hearing that with so much to learn. Wow! Jitni bari bhi apse baat hoti hai, to itna kuch seekne ko milta hai. Well, my next question is, what is your message for our youth today? uh see i have started believing in the power of small when people say what are your next goals where are you looking at vision 10 years down the line 
See, I'm not against planning. Planning is important. But our brain doesn't understand long-term thinking, long-term results. We are made for small daily things. Too small. I plan for the day. I can't plan for the decade. Yes. My next day's plan is ready before I go to bed tonight. All right. So, see, even if you have to travel, say, I live in Thane and I have to uh, drive to Pune by express uh, highway. See, especially night driving, if you are driving, you know that I might travel 100 kilometers from Thane to Pune, but at a time, the headlights can show only 4 meters of road. And by looking at that, observing those 4 meters at a time, I can travel 100 kilometers or 200 kilometers. Wow. That's exactly what's happening with us. So let's with our life, break right? the big goal into smaller goals, isn't it? Yeah. Well, yes, this perfectly. was a wonderful example. Everybody will be able to resonate with it. Well, what is success for you? This is one question which I ask from everybody, all the guests that I have mm -hmm. had. See, I think uh, we have given a wrong orientation to success. In fact, I've stopped, I've, I've, I've started using the word success less frequently nowadays. Yeah, More than success, for me, it is progress. Because we are not working for any destination or an end point. Okay? We are talking about the process and the journey. And it's going to be continuous. If I have to live for another 50 years, then there is no point in, in the, like for example, Amitabh Bachchan. We, for all of us, he is successful. But then every morning he must be getting up at 5.30, doing his chores, yeah, going for shooting and KBC. So that you just can't stop even if you are successful. Then where the concept of success comes? Yeah. I think it is, it is about improving the craft. More than the success mindset, what we need a craftsman mindset. Where a craftsman, when he's working on the sculpture or painting, he's so lost. He becomes union with that with that object, with his art. And then the end result, just give a smile on his face. That's all. Nothing. Whereas 99% is his heart and soul is into the making of that sculpture. And once he has fine-tuned the color, the eyes and whatever, it's just a big smile, which is probably his success, which is the tiniest part of the entire process. So I think we should have a craftsman mindset rather than a success mindset. Wow, wonderful to know so many things from you. मुझे लग रहा है कि आपसे जब भी बात होगी, जब जितनी भी छोटी या बड़ी मुलाकात होगी, तो उसमें बहुत कुछ सीखने को मिलेगा. Well, I'm sure, my dear friends, by now you must have understood that there is no need to follow the cat race. There is no need for you to be ready for the rat race, rather, and just keep trying to become a better version of your own self.